I was born in Italy, which is a very Catholic country. And although I don't come from a Christian background, a Christian family, I was interested in Christianity always as a form of power. Politics is often understood as something that has to do with power, division, opposition, conflict, whereas the word religion comes from religio, religare, to bring together. So religion is associated with truth, harmony, unity. How does religion and politics relate to each other has to do with the relation between power and truth. And that's what brought me to think about Christian democracy in the beginning. The reason I think it's interesting to study Christian democracy comes from two premises. The first reason is that Christian democracy has been an extremely influential body of thought and action in the history of particularly continental Europe, but also other continents such as Latin America. In the aftermath of the Second World War, who took up the pieces in continental Europe was mostly Christian Democrats, in particular in Italy, in Germany, in France, if you think the MRP was a Christian Democratic Party. And these are really the guys who constructed the European post-war order. They built, they wrote the European constitutions, and many of the most important achievements of European post-war politics, the welfare state, the construction of the European Union, are in many ways creations of Christian Democrats. So Christian democracy was extremely influential, but, and this is the second reason, at the same time it is mostly unknown. Especially in the Anglo-Saxon world, key Christian democratic concepts that were essential in creating the European post-war order, like subsidiarity, like social market economy, like personalism, are unknown. Think, for instance, how, mu how much literature, how many books exist asking the question, what is liberalism? Or what is conservatism? Or what is socialism? Uh, before I wrote a book entitled What is Christian Democracy, there was no book that explained what is Christian Democracy. So an extremely important set of principles that remain largely unknown. And so studying Christian Democracy is a way of studying ourselves, of going to the roots of the principles that founded the European order. I sometimes think of this uh, book that uh, an Italian philosopher called Benedetto Croce once wrote called Perché non possiamo non dirci cristiani? Why we cannot not call ourselves Christians. And with a bit of an ironic paraphrase, I want to say that it's important to study Christian democracy because whether we like it or not, we cannot not call ourselves Christian Democrats in Europe today. With the modern revolutions of the end of the 18th century, the church felt threatened, the Catholic Church felt threatened, and immediately adopted a position of resolute opposition towards modernity. The church condemned the French Revolution and even later throughout the 19th century adopted a position of radical opposition. In the 1861 syllabus of errors of Pope Pius XI, the Pope famously condemns modernity as an error and condemns as an error even the idea that Christianity should reconcile itself with modernity. But over the course of the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, the Catholic Church understood that this policy of radical opposition to modernity would run the risk of marginalizing it, especially politically. And therefore decided that they needed to adopt a different strategy and try to find ways of re reconciling themselves with modernity. Or as uh, Jan Werner Muller puts it, making modernity safe for Christianity. And Christian democracy in many ways emerges out of this project. It's an attempt at giving a reinterpretation of modern principles uh, that makes them safe for Christianity. The constitutions of many continental European countries were written by Christian Democrats. For instance, the constitution of Germany, the basic law, begins with an appeal to God and enshrines many Christian democratic principles within it. There had been a few attempts in Austria during the interwar period under Kelsen to give a democratic interpretation of what the constitution was uh, and introduce the principle of judicial review. But what really brought judicial review to Europe was Christian Democrats in the post Second World War period. And the function that they ascribed to constitutions was precisely to enshrine certain basic religious values in order to constrain the democratic will, to constrain the autonomy or the self-government of the people. The idea was that during the interwar period with Nazism, with fascism, it had been shown that, that unhinged democracy could lead to very terrible consequences. And for this reason, they wanted to enshrine certain basic values, such as, for instance, human rights or the rights of the human persons into constitution and give courts the right to constrain elected majorities from 
uh, violating these basic principles. I'll give you another example, the welfare state. Many people today, especially in the Anglo-Saxon world, think that welfare states were made in Europe by social democrats, the so-called social democratic consensus, which may be true in some of the countries of the north, in Sweden, in Norway, and to some extent also in the United Kingdom, but cannot be the case in continental Europe for the very simple reason that social democrats were just not in power in many of the continental European countries. In Italy, in France, in Germany, there were no social democrats in power. So really, who built the welfare state in Europe in continental Europe were Christian Democrats. And this reflects in the form that the, that the welfare state has taken in many of these countries, which is rather different from the northern social democratic model. Uh, the northern social democratic model is based on an idea of equality, decommodification, universal access to certain basic principles. Whereas reflecting the underlying Christian democratic values that underpin the construction of welfare states in continental Europe, the welfare state in countries like Germany or Italy has a very different structure. It, it has been called a remedial structure. The idea is not to establish equality, but it's based on an organic conception of society in which different sections of society have different functions, different roles to fulfill. And if they are incapable of fulfilling those roles, the state should step in to give them the conditions for establishing their, their social functions according to a, a, a Christian conception of the natural order or temporal common good. So this is a very conservative idea of the welfare state whose function is not to establish equality but to conserve harmony between the social classes and to prevent in many ways revolution and equality. Many of the most important founding fathers of the European Union were Christian Democrats. So let me give you a few examples. Konrad Adenauer, the Chancellor of Germany in the immediate post-war period. Alcide de Gasperi, the Prime Minister of Italy in the post-war period. Robert Schuman, the author of the famous Schuman Declaration that opened the process of European integration. These were all Christian Democrats. These were all deeply Christian Christian Democrats. In these meetings that they had for planning the European Union, first they went to mass, then they confessed, and then they talked to each other in German about the construction, the revival of a uh, Christian Europe. And they write and they're very self-consciously about it. In the research that I made for this book, I've had opportunity of interviewing uh, many Christian Democrats in the European Parliament and in Europe. I participated in some Christi e European People's Party's events. And you really get a sense that they think of the European Union as their playground. It's their creation and it, it's not something, that we have, they accept the, the social democrats within it, but there is an idea that if they lose control over it, somehow the European Union would lose its purpose. In my book, to describe the way in which Christian democracy remains a structuring principle of the European institutional framework today, I use the metaphor of the hermit crab. The hermit crab, as I hope you know, is a, one of those crabs, one of those shells that you find on the beach where the original animal that was in the shell has died and crabs go in it and inhabit this shell. And this is for me also a metaphor of how European Union works today. The shell of the European Union was made by Christian Democrats. The, the basic institutional framework, its commitment to human rights, its commitment to the social market economy as a third way between socialism and capitalism, its commitment to a particular form of religious constitutionalism, these are all Christian democratic principles that describe a shell. What happened then over the course of the second half of the 20th century is through the process of secularization through the process of the crisis of political parties, Christianity and more specifically Christian democracy gradually died away. So the original creator of the shell died. And what happened in the 1980s more or less is that a new inhabitant came to, uh, came to inhabit this new shell. The rise of neoliberalism is a phenomenon of the 80s and 90s. Let me remind you, there were very few liberals in Europe in the 1940s and 1950s. Liberalism was a discredited ideology. It was Christian Democrats who were ruling the game. It's only in the 1980s that liberalism comes back in town and it inhabits this shell of Christian democracy, giving it its own shape. So the, 
the, the politics in, in Europe for me can be understood in terms of the, the tension implicit in the metaphor of a hermit crab. We have a Christian democratic shell that constrains the development of a liberal crab that at the same time pushes on the boundaries of this shell, giving it its own shape in one way or another. So Christian democracy remains as a structuring factor of European politics, even though as a live political phenomenon, it has been decreasing in significance.